The Canadian Dental Association, CDA, is the national voice for dentistry. Our efforts support the continued success of the dental profession and optimum oral health promotion for Canadians. May 2021 to April 2022 marks the completion of our annual activities report. Our members are 10 corporate member provincial and territorial dental associations, or PDAs, and Quebec-based dentists who are CDA affiliate members. Each PDA that is a corporate member of CDA has one elected representative to bring its views forward to the CDA Board of Directors. The three Northern Territories have a single representative on the CDA Board. Dentists access CDA's programs and services by being a member of their PDA. CDA responded to the significant challenges posed by the pandemic while continuing to keep our primary areas of focus at the forefront, including advocacy, knowledge, and practice support services to help support the dental profession and realize our vision of a healthy public, a strong profession, and a united community. In a year dominated by the effects of the global pandemic, CDA's top priority was the ongoing management of the COVID-19 crisis and the provision of practice recovery support to dentists across Canada. Our COVID-19 Practice Recovery Task Force included representatives from all corporate member PDAs. The task force worked throughout the pandemic to provide information exchange on return to practice status across the country, strategies for obtaining and securing PPEs, and communications to the public on dentists returning to practice. Certainly for all of us, the last year, the COVID-19 pandemic has been very challenging, both for our general public, but also for dentists and particularly for their patients. CDA was active in addressing this unprecedented state of affairs and remained committed to supporting Canadians in the dental profession during these stress-filled times. We delivered key insights on issues related to the COVID-19 pandemic, and CDA's related work through our COVID-19 update e-communications, which were based on meetings with the CDA's Recovery Task Force and CDA corporate members, provincial and territorial association presidents and CEOs. In September 2021, at the height of when vaccines became more widely available to eligible groups, CDA issued a public statement from the CDA president calling on the immediate action of the provincial and territorial governments regarding mandated COVID-19 vaccines. We consulted our corporate member PDAs and incorporated feedback prior to publication. CDA remained committed to reducing the spread of COVID-19 and the need for hospitalizations and to further strengthen Canada's pandemic management efforts to combat new highly transmissible variants of the virus. In our statement, we stress that safeguarding the public's oral and overall health has always been dentistry's highest priority, and that oral health care providers have a fundamental duty of care to protect the health and safety of patients and the public. This duty of care should include full vaccination of the entire oral health care team, mandated by provincial and territorial governments. In October 2021, as dental offices adjusted to the new realities related to practicing in the COVID-19 environment, the task force shifted its attention to completing a comprehensive debriefing session to review the pandemic efforts. A toolkit and other helpful resources to support our corporate member PDAs and their member dentists will become available later in 2022-23. Advocacy is an important way in which CDA supports the dental profession, using our national voice to strategically raise issues and concerns facing dentists across Canada. As part of ongoing engagement with members of Parliament, Senators and senior government officials, we organize and participate in the annual Days on the Hill events in Ottawa. We had meetings with the offices of the Minister of Health and the Leader of the Opposition, as well as members of the House of Commons Health and Finance Committees on a range of various topics impacting the oral health of Canadians and the dental profession. CDA was actively engaged in the 2021 federal election, and we put forward a series of policy proposals to all of the major federal political parties to support dentists and access to dental care as Canada transitions to life post-COVID. We also advocated for the investment of an additional $600 million over the next five years in transfers 
to provinces and territories to support the maintenance and expansion of their publicly funded dental care programs. We believe that priority would be placed on serving populations with specialized needs, including seniors, children, low-income Indigenous, racialized and disabled Canadians, as well as public health education and prevention programs. This type of investment would bring the federal contributions to existing publicly funded dental care programs in line with contributions to services provided under the Canada Health Act. Our advocacy efforts over the last year were successful in producing several key outcomes. CDA has long recommended that national standards related to residents and long-term care facilities include a reference to oral health, which is now the case with the Health Standard Organization's recently released draft standards. Some other successes include, when it comes to advocating for dental offices and small businesses, the government moved forward on introducing enhanced tax provisions for small businesses making capital investments like purchasing equipment or ongoing renovations as a result of the new COVID-19 infection prevention and control practices. CDA advocated to move forward with proposed regulations requiring front of package nutrition labeling for food and beverage products, as well as restrictions on the commercial marketing of food and beverages to children. These types of changes will make it easier for the public to identify foods which are high in sugar. The Minister of Health's new mandate letter contains instructions to move forward on both fronts. One of our most recent advocacy actions involves the March 22nd announcement of the confidence and supply agreement between the federal Liberal and NDP parties. This agreement meant that the NDP would support the Liberal government on confidence votes until 2025 in exchange for a commitment on certain policies, including elements of a national dental care program. First and foremost, CDA supports efforts to improve access to care for those who need it the most. But in response to this sudden announcement, CDA also issued a statement reiterating our surprise that the federal government was considering a new large-scale federal dental program. We believe that the best single way to improve oral health and increase access to dental care quickly is to invest in and thereby enhance the existing provincial and territorial programs. Staff shortages have prohibited many dental practices from meeting patient demand and are creating a bottleneck in dentistry's pandemic recovery. Dental practices must now think creatively, not only about recruitment, but also staff retention. CDA is uniquely positioned to assess and forecast estimates on the supply of dentists and demand for dental care in the coming years. We are monitoring the overall dental situation closely and are collaborating with other bodies and key stakeholders, such as the Canadian Dental Assistance Association. We will submit a funding application to Employment and Social Development Canada's Sectoral Workforce Solutions Program with an aim of addressing the human resource challenges faced by dental offices. As part of our communication strategy, CDA captures, organizes, and disseminates information about oral health and the dental profession to CDA corporate member PDAs and their member dentists, and to key stakeholders. Over the last year, CDA has captured and shared timely and relevant information about the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as other issues affecting the dental profession and the oral health of Canadians through its corporate communications vehicles, such as the CDA Essentials Magazine, the Journal of the Canadian Dental Association, jcda.ca, social media, and more. CDA newsletter took the place of the CDA Oasis Bulletin. It features items from all CDA's communications vehicles and publications in one convenient location. AI recommends articles to read based on the topics that interest readers most, and these are featured in the curated section of the newsletter. The more users open and click through to articles in that section, the more the technology will learn and customize their reading preferences over time. CDA is committed to continuous improvement and adopting this technology was a board initiative. It is a step forward in responding to the changes in the ways that dentists want to receive and view content that is more specific to their particular interests. CDA works closely with Abacus Data, a leading public opinion research firm to track consumer public opinion and behavioral trends related to the COVID-19 pandemic. 
CDA subscribed to several waves of the COVID-19 tracking study with a custom question module intended to understand worry, intention, and behavior as it pertains to visiting the dentist. And we facilitated several presentations of the results to corporate member PDAs and dental stakeholders. The goal is to provide data to support better our advocacy priorities and to help anticipate changes in the factors that will impact oral health care demand in the future. CDA also provides a suite of electronic practice support services to help dentists run their practices and ensure that they remain efficient, secure and compliant when sending e-claims, e-referrals and when sharing patient records electronically. These practice support services include CDANet, CDA Digital ID, CDA iTrans, CDA Secure Send, and the CDA Practice Support Services website. CDA Secure Send safeguards the confidentiality of patient data when sending patient information, such as x rays, electronically. It is connected to CDA's directory of dentists so senders can search for dentists by name, specialty, or location. Thousands of dentists across Canada use CDA Secure Send as their practice's preferred method of sharing patient files with other general practitioners, specialists, and with patients. Over the last year, CDA developed a mobile app for CDA Secure Send. This app allows dentists to snap a picture using their phone and securely send it to a colleague while meeting privacy and record keeping requirements. In April 2022, the English version of the new CDA Secure Send mobile app became available as a free download from the iOS and Android app stores. A French version of the mobile app is currently being developed. Going from developing apps to developing training programs, CDA's COVID-19 Practice Recovery Task Force was also focused on the working mind a short course on mental health in the workplace from the Mental Health Commission of Canada. The Working Mind is an evidence-based program designed to promote mental health and reduce the stigma around mental illness in the workplace. Through adapting the scenarios in the course and drawing on the experience of dentists, the course is positioned to help dentists and dental office staff address the mental health challenges of the dental workplace. With the course completed, we're now working with the corporate members on how to integrate the course into their membership offerings. Following the initial pilot in April 2021, CDA funded full adaptation of the course to the dental workplace. We funded 13 pilot courses across Canada from November 2021 to January 2022. Feedback was overwhelmingly positive. This is a perfect way for you to connect with somebody, listen to other people's stories, and have that feeling of, I'm not alone. It does make sense. Somebody else feels what I'm feeling. It'll be okay. For me, it was about the fact that I'm, you know, I'm an employer working with people to be able to identify um, uh, mental health issues in myself, as well as in other people, my staff, my, my relationships, and things like that was probably something that I'd never really looked at before. The virtual version of the course is available now. It's delivered by professional facilitators of the Mental Health Commission of Canada. Our corporate member PDAs, dental societies, other dental organizations are welcome to sponsor a course and have it delivered to their members. We're now in the process of adapting the virtual course to an in-person course. There will be a dentist version and a dental office staff version. These in-person courses will be available in June of this year, 2022. The course consists of three core modules aimed at employee and manager participants, focusing on increasing self-awareness and taking care of your own mental health. In addition to the core program, a fourth module is a leadership-specific component to help managers, supervisors, and leaders of dental teams to better support their team's mental health. A key project in 2021 and 2022 has been the transition of the DAT program from a paper-based test to a computer-based test, designed to help students assess their aptitude for a career in dentistry and to assist dental schools in selecting first-year students. The new computer-based DAT in Canada opened for registration in March 2022. It's available 12 months a year, 
five to seven days a week, depending on the test center. This enables candidates to fit the DAT into their schedule rather than the other way around. Scores become available approximately four weeks following the testing appointment. A top priority for CDA is to enhance access to care for persons with special health care needs. I was lucky enough in 2019 to be part of a CDA commissioned research study involving dentists from across Canada. It examined the issue of access to care for persons with intellectual or cognitive disabilities. As a result of the research findings, CDA put in place a successful three-pronged action plan to address dentists' top knowledge requests and training needs. I'm pleased to say the third and final component of this action plan was launched in November 2021. It's called the Dental Treatment Case Complexity Form and Recommendations. It is an incredibly valuable assessment tool to help dentists and the dental team in making referral decisions when seeing persons with special health care needs. There are three color-coded levels of case complexity, routine, moderate, and complex. Categorization is based on many factors for each patient. It identifies potential barriers for dental care for persons with special health care needs and for the practitioner, makes case selection for these patient groups more efficient and consistent to document. In addition to the action plan, in December 2021, CDA launched a tool called the CDA Dental Patient Special Health Care Needs Transition Process. This tool aims to guide patients, families, caregivers, and oral health care providers seamlessly through the process of transition when an adolescent with special health care needs moves from pediatric to adult oral health care, or when an adult with special health care needs moves from one dental practice to another. This tool was co-developed by CDA and community-based pediatric dentists, general dentists, and a parent. The tool is based on best practices for persons with special health care needs and creates a consistent transition process for the Canadian oral health care environment. To help strength users' understanding, the Case Complexity Assessment Tool includes a series of short videos to learn more about terminology and conditions referenced throughout the tool. The Canadian Dental Association thanks our corporate member PDAs and stakeholders on a successful year under challenging conditions. We look forward to providing continued support in the dental community across Canada in the year ahead.